Hey everyone, and welcome to today's latest Monster Hunter video. So, Arc Tempered Vile Hazard has been released, and just like Arc Tempered Kieran, he's come with a new ability and a large increase to his health and damage. So, let's break him down and see what he's like. So, Vile Hazard, an Elder Dragon that is considered a weaker tier to many others, and one of the most easiest dragons to face when you want to grind out for streamstones or high tier jewels. For many people, they think of this being great, as it requires less time to take him out, and any weapon or gear can suitably take him on, as long as you're fully prepped. While others want to see a change in his difficulty, because he's too easy, and for an Elder Dragon, who is considered a literal walking disaster, that shouldn't be the case. So the dev team did us a huge favour, kind of, and buffed him to be even more powerful than his normal form, which has, I'll say for the community, split it into a 50-50 debate. Is he too strong, or is this a bit of a overkill? So what's been changed? Now he has a larger health pool, meaning when you first face him, it will take you around 20 plus minutes to complete. And this is just for solo play. Eventually, over time, you will get a lower and lower time. But I've noticed that for most players, it's around 20 plus minutes max to where they can take Valhazakon on their own and successfully defeat him. Now for groups, it will be slightly higher because, like everything, when you do things in groups, the health gets increased. So it basically quadruples its health even more. So it might be around 20 plus minutes, like normal, depending if your team is adequate enough, or 30 plus, 40 plus, or even max 50. It really does depend. But for a tip, I do recommend that you do the solo first, so you get a good grasp, and then when you feel confident, go ahead and do groups. Because groups is it's debatable when you're doing this. It's nice fighting with others, but it makes the difficulty even more worse. Now anyways, next he does more damage than his older counterparts, where he can either one-shot you through his breath beam attack, instant charge attack, or tail swipe, or half your health in one sitting, by simply swiping at you. And this is where most of your deaths may occur, as it only takes one swipe to put you in critical health, or worse. Now the worst thing to be added to him is the mini roar he gains when agitated, as this is the new updated move to him, and one of the most deadliest combos for him to have when active, as 9% of deaths, or mine generally, are because of this one move alone. So once he gets angry and lets out a roar, he'll release a miasma around the area like normal. However, he'll also gain a roar that, like Kushal and Shiosha's roar, will prevent bow slash bowgun users from aiming at his chest, as it will make him immune to shots like normal rounds, scatter, or pierce. Although using cluster, crag, and dragon piercer still works against him with his shield on and off. But if you were going to go ahead and use normal rounds, scatter, or pierce, you've got to aim for the head, either the tail, or even the tip of his wings. Those are the only areas where they are not immune to normal rounds, scatter, or pierce. But this isn't the main problem you have to deal with. The problem we have is that this miasma he sprayed everywhere, and his roar has amplified the damage it does, and now doubles the health taking damage effect on your life. To where before, it wasn't so bad and you could just eat a norberry to get rid of it. Now, it's a literal death sentence that the moment it hits you, you have to heal, or else he will kill you. So now, this leaves you with a very traumatic monster for many players, that has a ton of health for both solo and multiplayer, amped up damage that will kill you in one or one and a half shots, and an incredibly bad BO that drains the living life out of you. Oh, and did I also forget to say that when he roars and lands, he produces a wind pressure that sets you up for one shots or attacks, his downwards beam attack when he stands up on his back legs that, when it hits, actually procs three times rather than one, so it can actually combo you and potentially kill you. And also, his beam attack has his hitbox increased, so if you're by his side of his head when it procs, then there's a high chance that it will hit you. The same goes for his wings as well when he does a launching attack. That also has a hitbox increase that I've noticed. So yeah, this monster has a lot of BS that I'm sure the community will ultimately love. However, this can all be countered with a few tips and common sense. So firstly, bring miasma resistant jewels. I cannot say this to the top of my lungs. This is a major item you need to bring within the fight, as this will prevent the miasma build up damage from happening. And trust me, you don't want the build up damage to actually happen, because it will get you into a critical situation. You don't want to skip out on the skill, as build up made from Valhazak is much worse than his latter versions. And considering how fast it drains your health, you will know that if the builder activates, then it's game over for you. Now don't get this mixed up with Miasma Expert, as this only negates some of the ticking damage that the Rotten Veil environment produces. This may help you, but still you can use a torch pod to light up the area, 
and disperse some of the air or the environment around it. So it's more or less a skill that you can use, but it's not really going to be something that you need to heavily rely on. But the Miasma Resistant Jewel is something you really need within your build. Next, use and ultimately bring healing items. Lots of them. Health boosters, health up jewel, recovery jewel, medicine jewel, health og on your weapon, anything that involves allowing you to sustain your health will be a major bonus for your survival, as Valhazak is no joke anymore. He can and will reduce your health within a few seconds. So you need to build for defense first, before building for attack. Even having just a health argument as medicine will be enough, but you need to have health focus skills first, so you don't die so quickly. Next, use mantles. This is pretty much common sense really, as mantles are lifesavers and can help you with the most tedious fight out there. So it's wise for this fight to use mantles that can aid with helping you stay alive. The temporal mantle is a must, as it will allow you to instantly build any monster's move from light to heavy hitting attacks. While the vitality mantle will actually help with negating the miasma take damage from our hazard, and basically give you a free few seconds of breathing room and room to attack freely and not worry about healing for a set period. Now if you feel confident in your mantle choice, then using the evasion mantle is a wise choice as well, as successful dodges give you increased damage, which is always a pro for taking down monsters quickly. However, do not use the rocks any mantle. Well, you can use it, but for this situation, unless you feel confident, you're better off using something like Temporeal or Vitality. Now the only reason I say this is because how bad Valhazak's tick damage is, and how much damage he does himself. As although it will help you with tanking damage and negating certain attack for monsters, AT Val is a completely different case, as his attacks are more continuous, and his draining effect is too extreme to ignore. So don't use it, and by god don't use it in multiplayer, because it will get you killed. Now lastly, use elemental and stasis to your advantage. Val is very weak to fire, and weak to dragon, so you should be using this as a way to counter and defeat him. Although, Dragon only works if you manage to break his chest, so in this case, if you were to use Dragon against him, break his chest, or better off make full use of the Elder Seal to stop his Aurora and increase Miasma from spreading. Fire on the other hand is a must against him, as he is critically weak to his element, so creating this build around his weakness and making full use of the element will get you far, and there are some pretty strong fire based weapons from Anjanath that could really mess him up. If you can't get parts for Anjanath, then Rathalos is even better. Now Stasis, I've noticed that Blast and Paralysis is the most prevalent for doing extra damage against him. Blast when triggered will net you a free 120 in damage against him, which is moderately weak too, and can be achieved easily by going with the Lenustra weapons with their amazing set skills. Well Paralysis will stop him a lot, and net you free attack which, if you're in a group, will be a team asset for everyone. Sleep, although good is not recommended, unless you go solo, as group play is too I feel is too inconsistent to achieve. But silent bombing is always welcome against any monster you face. Now if you are going to go ahead and do sleep bombing, I recommend you do it with a group of people that actually know you're going to do sleep bombing. Going into a random lobby with randoms and expecting them to know what you're doing is kind of a death wish. Unless you get lucky. But you've got a better chance of sleep bombing AT Val if you're with a pre-made group. And that everyone is the initial breakdown of Arc Tempered Valhazak, and some of the do's and don'ts on how to generally prepare against a foe like him. That's kind of as much in depth as I can really go with him because he's still Valhazak. He's still that one monster that you can easily speed run if you use the correct gear and go in with a more defensive set rather than a more damage focused set. Although, yes, most of his skills do drain your life a lot, if you go ahead and use weapons that I would say is generally he's weak to, like either a fire, dragon, using paralysis, he's easy to take down. And if that is not enough, honestly I'll just put my build, one of my builds, in the description section so that you can click on that and give you a brief idea of what sets to go with, how to go up against him, how to build around it, and how to effectively take him down. But generally, that is really it when it comes down to AT Val. He's hard at first. But once you master him and understand his movements, his new moves and such, he's actually quite a cakewalk. Much more easier than AT Kieran, I believe. Now, if you enjoy the content, then do leave a like, a sub, and also do press the bell button to stay always updated to when I upload. As generally, it would help me out, but it would help you out mostly. But once again, thank you for watching, and I do hope to see you again soon.